So many online services these days require an email address or a phone number in order for you to sign up to them. Now you could give the online service your email, which they probably claim is just used for you logging into your account and resetting your password, and maybe for some important emails about the service, but it's an opt-in. If you don't check the box, don't worry, you're not gonna get anything. But anyone who's been using the internet long enough knows that this almost always leads to you getting spam emails, either from the service themselves or from some third party that they decided to sell your email to. Now there's a couple of ways that you can go about mitigating this. You could just not use those services, that's the obvious answer, but what if it's something that you actually do need to use? I would assume that everybody watching this is smart enough to just not give away their personal information unnecessarily, so obviously here, abstinence is not the best solution. You could just create a trash email, like a random AOL or Yahoo that you're gonna use for everything besides your core services that you regularly use, but there are some downsides to that solution. So like I mentioned earlier, online services are going to send you spam and that spam is going to fill up your inbox um, and it could easily get to the point where you receive so many emails that you literally cannot receive the account creation email that you get from some kind of a new service into your trash account. And so you're gonna have to go through that trash email and bulk delete all of those you know, other spam emails that you got. And that's a waste of time. You probably just want to get back to shit posting on your alt accounts or you know, seeing how many ethnic slurs that you can use on Club Penguin before getting banned, try to set a new personal record. Uh, plus, it can be potentially bad OPSEC to just use one throwaway email because if all of these random online services have accounts connected to that one email, the possibility of someone identifying that as you goes way up, especially if you signed up for things like Grubhub or Uber uh, using that throwaway email. So what you really want is a temp email. So there's a couple of services uh, that are available for this. The most popular one is probably GorillaMail.com. Uh, as you can see here, they've processed over 13 billion emails already. So a lot of people already know about this. A lot of you guys probably know about this already. Uh, so you basically get a temp email uh, like this. Um, by default, it's scrambled for some reason. Uh, I don't really know why they do this, but you can just uncheck the box. And then you see you get uh, basically a few characters. This is usually alphanumeric, so like it could have numbers in it. Uh, and then you get at sharklasers.com. So you can just copy this and uh, use it for whatever thing that you need to sign up for. Um, and then the email is going to come into this inbox and there you go. Uh, oh, and the emails from Gorilla Mail get deleted after one hour. Uh, so they're not gonna just stay in there forever for you know whoever gets this email address next to see it because obviously these email addresses get recycled. There's not gonna be an infinite amount of emails on here. Uh, now there are a couple of downsides to this approach and they mostly have to do with how popular this service is. So first of all, Gorilla Mail was actually taken down a couple of months back and it was down for several weeks. Um, I didn't really keep up with the story to see like what the actual reason was, like why they were taken down in the first place. Uh, but yeah, this site might not even be accessible to you in some cases at some times. And the other problem is a lot of online services know about Gorilla Mail. So they will actually block all of these different domains. So there are a few different ones. Um, Shark Lasers is just the default. So this one is most likely to be banned by certain online services. Um, but there's a few other like Gorilla Mail.info, uh, Gur.la, uh, Spam4.me. But again, there's like only a few here. So it's pretty easy to just bulk ban all of these different email domains from an online service. Uh, and 
like I said, it's the most popular one. So if you have a problem with spammers or if you're trying to avoid like spammers or trolls or stuff like that, because, you know, there's legitimate uses to Gorilla Mail, but obviously a lot of people are going to use temp email to just harass people as well. Uh, they might just end up banning all of these domains and then that's not even an option that you can use. And because all of these emails are recycled, like whenever you go to this website, you just get a random one assigned to you. There is a small but possible scenario where whatever account that you created with this email could get hacked. So say for example, you use Gorilla Mail to sign up to a forum uh, with this email right here, well, with a different one that I'm going to show you in a second. Um, so you use that to sign up, and then that's your forum account. And let's say that for whatever reason on that particular forum, by default, your email is public to people. Or maybe you just decided to set that setting for some reason. Uh, by the way, you obviously wouldn't want to use that, but you know, maybe you're, you, you didn't know any better. So you have this email public and everybody on the forum can see it. So that hacker knows what email you use. And if he sees at shark lasers, he might know, oh, this guy used Gorilla Mail. Well, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna come over here to the edit field of Gorilla Mail and I'm going to you know, put in whatever his address was. So let's say it's secret at sharklasers.com. Set that and boom. Now I have access to this person's inbox. So, you know, like let's say that this was something that you don't want people to see, or better yet, let's say that the hacker wants to actually hack your forum account. So usually um, when you go to reset your password, they don't, uh, they don't just like give you your password and tell you, oh yeah, this was your password. Because if they're doing that, uh, by the way, you shouldn't use the service because it means that they're not encrypting your passwords. Uh, typically, they'll just send you a password reset link, which is going to be this long thing that's usually pretty hard to guess, um, and then you go to it. So they're going to get that email link because it's this is the only email the form has for you, and then they can reset your account, and uh, boom, now they have your form account as well, uh, and then they can get you banned, tarnish your reputation, um, if you use that account for anything that's like e-commerce related or buying stuff, then they can also potentially get your credit card information depending on uh, how, you know, whether it's actually secured in the forum or not and your address if you have your shipping address in there. So lots of spooky stuff can happen. So maybe you're thinking now I don't want to use Gorilla Mail. Uh, luckily, there are other email services that you can use. So this here is TempMail. Uh, this one is a little bit less known, and I'm pretty sure that they have way more domains that are available to them, so it's a lot less likely that services are going to ban all of these. Uh, plus, they also have a browser add-on that goes with this website, so you don't even necessarily have to visit the site manually. You could just use the add-on. Uh, so yeah, same idea. You get a temp email that you can receive mail to, and this inbox gets flushed out every hour. Now, this email might seem a little bit more secure because you can't just uh, change the email address here. Um, well, I mean, technically you could change it down here, but this is a premium feature, and I think that this is just to like create a real email with them because you can put in like a password and stuff here. Um, not 100% sure, I've never used TempMail Premium, and most likely somebody isn't going to pay for TempMail Premium to try and hack your Club Penguin account, but there is a way to get into people's inboxes in TempMail, it just requires a little bit of big brain thinking. So the way that this service used to work is um, you would basically go here, but you wouldn't be on tempemail.org. Uh, just like tempemail.org forward slash em. There used to be a really long string of characters that would come after this. Uh, and it turns out that that really long string of characters is the full email address that would appear here encoded in Base64. So same scenario as Gorilla Mail, 
except you just uh, encode the user's email address. Uh, so let's take, um, I think this is the one that I used earlier. So you just take the user's email address and then encode it in base64. Okay, so we have that string. And then you go to tempemail.org uh, here, I'll just copy this URL. So tempemail.org en forward slash question mark email equals, and then that base64 string. And uh, let's see, I think I have, yeah, I'm blocking scripts. So I'll just refresh this. All right, there we go. I just had to uh, unblock some of the scripts so that this site would actually work. But yeah, you can see I'm in the inbox now and I'm able to read top secret emails. So this solution, it isn't totally foolproof. You gotta kind of use your noggin a little bit. You know, it is uh, it is useful for true throwaway accounts that you literally don't care about, like you don't even care about them getting hacked. Uh, just make sure that the account doesn't have any of your personal information on it. Otherwise, spooks are going to get it and do spooky stuff with it.